This is the silly little to-do app that we've been building out over the past I don't even know how many videos. It is was originally designed to be a Golang backend with a Svelkit front end, but ultimately I made the call to switch everything over to Svelkit into our entire full stack app in Svelkit. You want to see the reasoning on why I made that decision? Check out my most recent video. But today we're just going to be doing a code breakdown showing you guys how all this works, how Drizzle works, which is the ORM we're using. It's an amazing ORM and the sort of code behind it. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. So I think the best place to start with this is going to be just with the signup page. I think we kind of just go page by page and I'll show you how all this is working. So before we do the signup, we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you the Drizzle setup. So like I said, for the ORM, we are using Drizzle. It is a fairly new ORM. It is super lightweight. It's effectively just a TypeScript wrapper around SQL, which I love. It makes it super clean and easy to go ahead and write type safe SQL, but you're still writing SQL, not some weird ORM language. So to start this, we got to make a schema. So like most ORMs that you will deal with, you have to define a schema for your database. Tell it what the models are, what it's dealing with. And I went ahead and did that in my schema.ts folder. Drizzle can handle migrations and database pushing and all that stuff. We're not going to be going over that today. That'll be a future video where I talk about how I manage my databases, specifically in the sort of newer context with planet scale and neon and branching and all this stuff that they've got. I love the new way of doing databases so much better than the old way. So we'll talk about that soon. But for today, the these are just the models that we're going to be using. I declared them as users table and to do's table. And then you can go ahead in here and say, okay, this is a MySQL table because we're using MySQL. You define what the name of the table is in your database. One of the most useful things I think that you guys can really see when we're working with databases is how these ORMs connect directly to the SQL underneath. Something I didn't get for a very long time, which really stunted my growth as a backend engineer was I was super reliant on Prisma and I never looked at how it's really impacted impacted the underlying database. I could only interface with my database through the lens of Prisma versus with Drizzle. I think it's a lot clearer and that connection between your database and your ORM is a lot more it feels a lot more tight, if that makes any sense. So the reason for that is if we go over here to my, this MySQL table, this first argument is what the table name is. So the table name is users, and then we're defining what the fields are. I'm defining the ID as the primary key. Serial just means it's an auto incrementing integer. So I have my integer primary key, which assigns over here. If we go ahead, this is table plus, by the way, I get that question a lot. If we open the structure of this table, we can see right here, okay, so this is an integer. This ID is an int, it's auto incrementing. You know, we get all that information. We also get that from serial. Then we have our first name, which is just a varchar255, last name, same thing, email, password. All this stuff is great and it directly assigns to what we have over here. And we do the exact same thing for the to-dos. All good stuff here. And we get these two objects which are exported, which are gonna be our to-dos table and our users table. Within the, uh, Drizzle documentation, they recommend they set this just as like users and just as to do's. I added the table afterward just because it makes it easier for my brain to look at this to be like, okay, I'm dealing with the users table object elsewhere because we're going to be using this a lot. This and this are going to show up everywhere within our code because that's sort of how Drizzle works. It uses these to build out our queries. So when we go into our signup page, we end up with two different uh, key functions here. We have load, which is just making sure they're not signed in. And then if they are sending them away and if they are um, and then if they're not, we can go ahead and sign up and then we do all of that within this action. So if you watch this series already, you've probably seen the form data stuff that we handled. We're just using the SvelteKit forms. This will be the last time I talk about these in this video, but this is the signup page and this is the signup form. It just is a form right here, which has an input of first name, last name, email, and passwords. So all of that gets submitted to our backend using uh, form actions, which is super useful and convenient. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually like set up our user within our database. Obviously we need to hash the password because you can't store passwords in plain text. So I'm just using bcrypt right here to hash the password. Uh, it's nice, apparently bcrypt works in edge runtimes. I have all of this hosted on the edge and it works there. So that's super awesome. Um, we're able to hash our password and then 
we do our drizzle statement. So if you remember before we had to make an external call to our Golang back and to do all this stuff. And now all we're doing is we're basically just doing a SQL insert right here within our Svelkit app. And the syntax for this in drizzle is super, super clean and super, super easy. So their documentation will be linked below and I highly recommend you look at it. So this right here is gonna be super similar to SQL. If you're familiar with a SQL insert statement, this is the same general idea. We just are declaring, okay, we're gonna be inserting into the users table. So I'm gonna be inserting users table. And remember this users table is what we defined way over in our schema and we imported that. That's the reason why I named it users table instead of just users. Cause I think it's way easier to be like, okay, we're going into the users table and we're dealing with the database here, not just like an array of users or something like that. So we insert into our users table. We define what values it's going to be. This is all type safe. So if I went in here and I said fake um, val and then just set it to be this it'll yell at me. So this right here, it will throw an error because it's not on the types we declared. So we get type safe SQL effectively, but it's still generally speaking SQL. And this is all a lightweight TypeScript wrapper around. Yeah, it's just a type safe SQL wrapper around our database. Super easy. The syntax is really, really clean. And then we go ahead and we just create a JWT. I made this little JWT helper uh, server method thing, which is just creating and verifying JWTs. I'm using this, um, this different JWT package the reason being uh, the default JWT package doesn't work in the edge runtime. So I wanted to make sure everything could run on the edge. So we just use this one. It's more lightweight. It works with all the JWT stuff we need and we can set our headers and stuff that way. So I'm just creating the JWT, setting the token and then redirecting to me. So we go in here and we could just do a test a video and we'll just do testing from video at gmail.com dot com and then put in a password and then we hit enter and then bam it just works so all of that was created and now we can go view our basic to do app example and let's look at that because that's going to be the most interesting stuff with our crud roots so we go into this page.server at the root and that's going to be for our app again you just have to add a line and then save and vs code will figure it out i don't really know why that happens but it does what we're doing here is we have once again we have the two actions and load. There's a lot more actions this time because it's, you know, it's the to-do app page. It's we need to have crud roots in here. If you've been watching this series up until now, you know, you'll notice that a lot of this is very similar to what it used to be. It's just instead of doing an external call to our Golang backend, we just typically switch that out for a really simple, really easy um, drizzle statement in here. Um, so we go in here and we're going to go, okay, so let's load the data and we need to fetch the users to do. So all we have to do is just do a select statement. Again, if you're familiar with SQL, which I highly recommend you get familiar with SQL, this is pretty much just how it normally works. I'm just saying, okay, we want to select these fields. So I'm selecting completed description, title, and ID. I have to tell it what those are going to be because that that's how they get the type safety in there. So I'm telling it that I'm going to get the to do's table completed to do's table description, et cetera, et cetera. Remember, this is what we defined in the scheme. I just want to hammer that home over and over again because Drizzle uses that a lot. So we're pulling out these four fields and then we go ahead and we're grabbing it from the to do's table. So this is just the select defining the fields from here. And then we're just doing a where statement where the user ID on the to do is equal to the currently signed in user. So all of this very closely maps to SQL and that's a pattern you're going to see everywhere. And that's my favorite part about Drizzle is how close it is to SQL to where it's the same general idea with type safety, which is awesome. So we get these to do's, they're fully type safe. We know that it's just an array of to do's with completed description, title, and ID. It knows description is optional. Everything else is required. And then we return this and then we have access to this on our page and we can display it out. So if I go in here, we're going to get nothing because we just created this account. So let's go ahead and add some more stuff to it. So the first thing we're going to do is the create. Again, we're just doing the form data. I don't need to repeat myself here. Making sure we're logged in, grab the user's information from the verify auth JWT, and then we go ahead and we just insert into the to-dos table. Again, exactly as we did before. We just say, okay, we're inserting into this table and we're defining these values. Obviously, this doesn't map to SQL one-to-one, -one, but it's the exact same concept, and it's really intuitive once you get used to it. And what's amazing about this is how lightweight it is to where there's no code gen on all of this. It just kind of works, and it can run in an edge runtime which is awesome. So we're just inserting title, description, user ID, and completed on here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We just put in this and this, we add it, and then it'll show up because we refresh the page on submit. We redid that get request, and now we have this information. 
So all of this is working great. The last two I'll show you guys are gonna be the delete and update. For the delete method, again, all we're doing is grabbing the ID of the to-do. If you remember from the earlier videos, we're doing a cool little trick in here where within our page itself, I'm printing out all these to-dos. Over here, I had this complete and delete. Instead of setting state and passing in like uh, form parameters and all this stuff and dealing with that, I'm actually just still using basic HTML forms, but I'm getting a little fancy with it and I'm setting this hidden ID um, input of ID and setting its value to be the to-do's ID. So anytime we submit this form right here, and this is the complete form, sorry, uh, this is the delete, they do the same thing effectively on the front end. Anytime we submit that, we're gonna be passing this ID with it so I can pull that out of the form data. So I can pull form data out of the, uh, I can pull form data out. I can go ahead and use that down here to delete where the to-dos table ID equals the ID that we passed up. And then it just works again very close to SQL, and I've said that 15,000 times. Remember, you gotta pass in the to-dos table argument, and then it works. So we go in here, I guess we'll do complete first. It's the exact same concept, just an update call. We're updating the to-dos table, we're setting completed to be true, and we're doing it where the to-dos table ID is equal to the ID we passed in. So this is all very basic CRUD stuff. It's very quick, it's very easy, it's very SQL-like, and their documentation is fantastic. That was a complaint for a while, they didn't have docs, but now they do, and they're great so you go ahead you go ahead you update things you delete things and i'll show you how that works complete delete and that's it i feel like there's more i should be saying here but it really just is this easy and that's what's kind of crazy about it is it's just sql in a lightweight typescript wrapper that just works and I know a lot of like these are very simple contrived examples that to do app is as basic as it gets, but like these are the foundational concepts on which any app will generally speaking be built. CRUD operations are at the base layer which we can build on top of to do more complex things. And of course you could have more complex queries than this. Of course you have more complex inserts and updates and all that stuff and far more complex logic and UI, but the same concepts are gonna hold the entire time and it's gonna be just as quick and just as clean any way you do it. So I love this setup, Drizzle is awesome. Make sure to go, their links are down below, try them out, start their repo, support the guys making it, they're awesome. And yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I know this was super quick and basic, but like there's just not that much to say. It's just this easy, like I, I don't know, man. It's just good. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll see you guys very soon.